Ain't flowers the blackest shit ever? How they put dirt on us and we still grow, drown us in water and we survive? Planning and everything that keeps us grounded, they be shooting solar rays at us, hoping that we wither, not knowing our melanin be photosynthesis, the sun be our best friend. Ain't flowers the blackest shit ever? Yeah. Um, I'm Lindo, yes, a spoken word artist, blur. Um, that means that I'm a black person that identified with nerd culture and everything that relates to sci-fi and fantasy. And I'm a black superhero. Anytime I'm marching with the people in our midst of protests, I always feel a sense of camaraderie, but I also feel love because there's, there's a moment of just like collective grievances that we have in protests that we can all cry together, we can all scream together, we can all chant together, we can all dance together, we can all have this righteous, needed raise to demand action. And within that, there's like small tasks that we all need of just like decompression. So sometimes inside a protest, there's people creating meditation spaces, making sure people have water, making sure people are okay so the cops don't have to intervene so there's no more harm done to people. So we're always asking everybody, are you okay? Do you need help? Do you, do you want me to you know, uh, help you out on this walk? All these, all these things. And just like, do you need a ride home after this? Are you gonna be safe afterwards? And these are coming from people you don't know. And that communal love is so powerful because it's beyond just like expectations, but it feels like such a norm. I came to be a poet um, because I recognized like I was a person that was uh, living with social anxiety and I still live with social anxiety. And in that social anxiety, the best way I could prescribe, you know, safer interactions with me where I didn't feel as though so much anxiety because I was thinking of myself self-defecating or doing anything that could embarrass myself or disappoint people. I was rehearsing conversations in my head. And the more and more I rehearsed those conversations in my head, the more I felt prepped and ready to have these interactions in person that, of things that I was anticipating. And the more I had those interactions, people were saying like, yo, you know what you said was a poem? And then I was like, really? And then I started doing that. And like, I'm a blur, so I love comic books, I love sci-fi, I love fantasy, I love anything that allows me to experience the possibilities of a better future. And um, I was like, yo, words are allowing me to combat these interactions and issues in ways that I don't think I could have did on my own. And it feels like my own superpower. So it felt like I was becoming the heroes that I was seeing on screen, combating the world around me. And I started to feel as though like, not only are my words allowing me to combat these things, but it's also allowing me to manifest these things. So like when I'm on stage, I feel as though so much of what I'm saying is be of because of actions, and so much of what I'm saying is going to become action. So that, that's how I got into spoken word, and that's how I'm, I'm using my words now. I feel like sometimes my words are impacting people in ways that I'm not privy with, because like sometimes people are sitting with it or looking at my videos, and they may feel it in their heart, and I'm just like not privy to those conversations. But the moments I do have um, in person is I, I remember I, I can remember so many times there has been tears of joy, tears of pain. And when I say tears of pain, I mean tears of pain and affirmation, like someone feels this same hurt as me and that validates that this is not normal and I needed that, you know? Um, so I, I experience that, you know, often, or sometimes it's just really casual of just like, yo, that's dope and that made me feel, you know? And that's all it is, you know? Uh, so those happen often, sometimes, when I'm doing poetry in the midst of a protest, I see that it activates people. I see that uh, sometimes it allows people to move in a different rhythm when they didn't figure, when they didn't feel as though they, they had the beat to even move on. Um, or sometimes it just provides relief um, in a sense of just like, yo, you said things that I was feeling, but I didn't know how to put the words to it, and now you said it. Now it, pro it provides relief for me, because now I have words to, to say to others. I remember James Baldwin saying, um, 
the, the, the work of an artist, and I'm paraphrasing, the work of the artist is to make the movement irresistible. And I feel as though that's what my words are doing, and that's what I strive to, is to make all these actions so irresistible that you can't help to accept that we need a change to, to move forward. And what that forward looked like, it has to be radical. It has to be in the spirit of this communal love that we have. Um, and um, those that don't have it for us need to move out the way. 12 years ago, um, maybe 10, I'm not sure what my math, when Trayvon Martin happened and people said Black Lives Matter, it was still so much resistance to just like that matter part. It's just like we are just as value, value and significant. But then with all the, the protest signs, the art that's created around Black Lives Matter, it has become so appealing. It's so appealing that the last time they did a survey, which was about a year and a half ago, more than 50 uh, more than 50 percent of the nation agreed that Black Lives Matter, and that's what art did. It made it so irresistible it convinced enough people, and you know that was a credit of all the artists in the space. And anytime we think of any movement, it has art. Even when we think about the Black Panther movement, when we think of the Black Panther, we think of the Panther. We think of, so someone had to draw that Panther in such a way that we got it. We got what's going on right here, you know? So that, that's why I look at my work of just making everything irresistible so we can convince minds and allow change and activate more people. Tears rolled down my eyes as I was looking in the mirror for answers. You was looking for a way out. You was the type of woman I blow bubbles with on a windy day, chase satellites in the sky as we stole parts for our time machine, and we fought dragons with just water guns. But no matter how many times we time travel, matter be past or future, it will always be present while you're leaving. And before you leave, love, before you leave, I wanna first kiss your soul so my tongue can speak on its being. You being you, you being beautiful, you create caterpillars in my stomach until they butterfly. You always on flight, that means you stay fly. I have never, I mean, I have never seen you at airports, but I know you skydive, cause you have fallen for people. I have fallen for you. I hope you fall for me, but you worship the sky. And I'm too down to earth for you, but maybe my spaceship can land on planet. You are the world, my world evolves around you. I hope I'm never out your orbit. I got secrets to tell you. Well, that's a lie. Because the only space in between us is the space we have created. And I have created this you and I verse just to talk about you. Yes, just to talk about you. Because I love the conversation in my head. Because even when I'm not thinking, you are thought. You have the biggest part of me, which is my heart. I hope you never lose it. Just in case I have kept the receipts. Just in case I need that shit back. You know I have time travel. And seeing our future. And seeing you leave me. Well, I need you back in our present. Well, our joy is always, because I know, I know in our future, our joy can be as faded as clothes that have been washed too much. I need to stop time traveling, because I have watched you too many times leave me, because you have skeletons in your closet. Well, don't worry. I have stories of baggage from me guilt tripping, but I can no longer afford that vacation because I've been on a pursuit of happiness. I hope you come with me. I hope you on a driver or passing a seat side with me. And don't worry about the money. The money will come soon. You will leave me. And I know you're expecting me to have words to say because I'm a poet. The change of forecast of the weather we end but in these moments, all I can do is reside in the storm and remember times we held each other close, times that we whispered to each other, I love you, and I remind you, and you hold me close, and whisper in my ear, I love you, goodbye, because we can no longer be any more committed than we are, and I hope I hope in another lifetime when you are a butterfly and I'm merely the wind, embracing the flapping of your wings, consoling your soul to be the free spirit that you are, maybe then, maybe then we can be more than we are. Thank you.